So I had not intended to intervene in any debate. But I was, a, I was doing physiotherapy just now and reading the newspapers and uh, I thought I should bring the house back to earth. <clears throat> Mr. Rajaratnam had great virtues in the midst of despondency after a series of race riots when we were thrown out to independence and our Malays in Singapore were apprehensive that now that we were the majority, we will in turn treat them the way they would treat a Malay majority treated us. He drafted these words and rose above the present. He was a great idealist. <clears throat> it came to me, I trimmed out the unachievable and the pledge as it stands is his work after I've trimmed it. What is it? An ideology? No. It's an aspiration. Will we achieve it? I do not know. We'll have to keep on trying. Are we a nation? In transition. I want to move an amendment that to this amendment that acknowledges the progress that Singapore has made in the 50 years since the attained self-government 1959 in nation building and achieving the aspirations and sentence. The aspirations, these were aspirations. This was not an ideology. Can I have a copy of the uh, amendment? Uh, amendment? Yeah. Okay. So I'll sit down first and give you a round. Thank you. Well, it seems to be in order, but, you know. <clears throat> Sir, reference was made to the Constitution. The Constitution of Singapore enjoins us to especially look after the position of the Malays and other minorities. It comes under Article 152, 153. I'll read it. Minorities and special position of Malays. It shall be the responsibility of the government constantly to care for the interests of the racial and religious minorities in Singapore. The government shall exercise its functions in such a manner as to recognize the special position of the Malays, who are the indigenous people of Singapore, and accordingly it should be the responsibility of the government to protect, safeguard, support, foster, promote their political, educational, religious, economic, social, and cultural interests of the Malay language. And Muslim Religion 153, the legislature shall by law make provision for regulating Muslim religious affairs and for constituting a council to advise the president in matters of the Muslim religion. We expressly state in our constitution a duty on behalf of the government not to treat everybody as equal. It's not Reality is not practical. It will lead to grave and irreparable damage if we work on that principle. So this was an aspiration. As Malays have progressed, and the numbers have joined the middle class with the university degrees and professional qualifications, we have asked Andaki to ask them to agree not to have their special rights of free education at university, but to take what they were entitled to 
put those fees to help more disadvantaged Malays. So we are trying to reach a position where there is a level playing field for everybody, but it's going to take decades, if not centuries, and we may never get there. <clears throat> now let me read the American Constitution. In his Declaration of Independence on the 4th of July, 1977, adopted in Congress, the Declaration read in the second paragraph, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. To secure these rights, governments, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That's 1976. 1977. 1976. Sorry. <laughs> I beg your pardon. The Constitution passed a few years later says, We, the people of the United States, this is the preamble, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings and liberties to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States. Nowhere does it say that the blacks would be differently treated. But the blacks did not get the vote until the civil rights movements in the 1960s with Martin Luther King and his famous speech, We Dare to Dream. And enormous riots took place. And eventually, President Johnson passed the Civil Rights Act. And it took many, many more decades before the southern states, which kept the blacks in their position, allowed the registration of black voters, and subsequently, even after that, to allow black students to go into white schools. <clears throat>